it's important to like what you eat, but it's even more important to eat what's good for you. Let's see how much you know about healthy food. Listen to this song and do what it says. Good for you, good for you. You're eating right, so good for you. Good for you, good for you. Cause you know what's good for you. Like vegetables, potatoes, broccoli, and string beans. Spinach and carrots and leafy greens. Now here's what I want you to do. Name one vegetable that's good for you. Good for you, good for you. You're eating right, so good for you. Good for you, good for you. Cause you know what's good for you. Like a piece of fruit. An apple, an orange, or a bunch of grapes. Bananas and pears will keep you in shape. Now here's what I want you to do. Name a piece of fruit that's good for you. Good for you, good for you. Be sure to eat what's good for you. Good for you, good for you. Cause you know what's good for, you know what's good for, you know imaginary adventures? Well, I sure do. Sometimes I imagine I live in a faraway land, and other times that I'm a little girl who really lived long, long ago. Like the time I imagined I was a pilgrim girl at the first Thanksgiving. Would you like to hear my imaginary adventure right now? You would? Well, all right, here goes. The first person I met on my adventure was another little girl the same age as me. Hello, said the little girl. My name is Priscilla. Hi, Priscilla, I said. My name's Cricket. Pleased to meet you. Would you like to help me do my chores, said Priscilla. Sure, I said. What you doing? I'm gathering cranberries for a Thanksgiving feast. Hey, I said. We have cranberry sauce at our Thanksgiving, too. So Priscilla and I got on our hands and knees and started picking cranberries. They sure were hard to reach, but after about an hour, we had a whole basket full. Whew, I said, that was hard work. Can we take a rest now? I'm afraid not, said Priscilla. Now we must gather some nuts to cook with the turkey. Hey, I said, we have nuts in our turkey stuffing too. So Priscilla and I went out into the orchard to pick some nuts. Only problem was, the nut trees were too high for us to climb. How are we ever gonna get those nuts down, I said. I know a trick, said Priscilla. Watch. Then she picked up a stick and shook it in the branches of the nut tree. And what do you think happened then? You guessed it, nuts started falling everywhere. We filled our apron so full, we could hardly walk. Whew, I said. That was hard work. Can we take a rest now? I'm afraid not, said Priscilla. Now we must scoop out some pumpkins to make pumpkin pie. Hey, I said, we have pumpkin pie for our dessert too. So Priscilla and I started scooping out pumpkins. We used a big wooden spoon that her dad made and a big wooden bowl made by her mom. We must have scooped for about an hour, but finally our pumpkins were all scooped out. Phew, I said. That was hard work. Can we take a rest now? I'm afraid not, said Priscilla. We have a lot more work to do before it's dinner time. So Priscilla and I gathered corn from the cornfield and picked carrots and turnips in the garden. And we even dug clams at the seashore. Then finally, all our work was done and it was time to have Thanksgiving dinner. I sat outdoors at a big long table with Priscilla and her family. And you know what? 
There was so much food to eat and so many games to play. Priscilla's Thanksgiving went on for three whole days. Then my imaginary adventure was over. I was back at my own Thanksgiving with my mom and dad and little brother Quirky and my grandma and grandpa too. Golly gee, I said when we all finished eating. We sure are lucky. Why is that, Cricket, said my mom. Because, I said, our Thanksgiving comes from the grocery store. <laughs> and everybody laughed. After all that work, here's a fun game we can play. First thing you do is sit down and look at everything around you. Now I'm going to tell you a story, but I'll leave out some of the words. Whenever I leave out a word, you'll hear the sound. Then you look around, pick out something you see, and say what it is. It could be a window, a tree, a chair, or anything at all. Get ready, because here we go. This is a story about a handsome but rather mixed up. One day, he decided to give a dinner party and invite his friend, the... Oh, what a lovely dinner he made. First he cooked a big... Then he baked a delicious. Everything smelled so good, he could hardly wait to eat. Then finally his guests arrived. Do sit down at the... He said, and he began to serve dinner. After they had eaten, he went into the... To get the special 10 layer cake for dessert. But just as he was bringing it to the table, he tripped over a... Oh no! The cake tumbled over and fell. Splat! Right on the... What a splendid dessert, cried his guest, who was just as mixed up as he was. How did you know my favorite dessert is upside down cake? Here's another fun game about food. I'll name three things to eat and see if you can tell me which one is a green vegetable. Peanuts, spinach, or bananas? Which one is a green vegetable? The answer is spinach. Spinach is a vegetable and it's green. Here's another one. Which one of these is an orange vegetable? A carrot, a cucumber, or a lemon? The answer is a carrot. It's a vegetable and it's orange. Now here's another one. Which one of these is a purple vegetable? An apple, a peach, or an eggplant? That's a hard one, but you can figure it out. Apples aren't purple vegetables and peaches aren't purple either. So the answer must be an eggplant. If you've never seen an eggplant, find one the next time you're in the grocery store. They're pretty and they're good to eat too. Here's a song about cooking. You might recognize the tune, but I changed the words a little. See if you can sing along. I've been cooking in the kitchen all the live long day. Oh, I've been cooking in the kitchen. Cause my mom says it's okay Can't you see the folks are coming From all around the neighborhood They know there's something in the oven Cause boy it sure smells good Now it's time to cook again We're gonna make another fun recipe from our cookbook Only this time it's not something to eat It's something to play with Fun though so make sure it's all right to use the kitchen. Wash and dry your hands, and let's cook up some fun. Have you got your Cricut cookbook? And our matching aprons too? Put on your apron first, and then put my apron on me. Now turn to page 21 in your cookbook. Do you see the recipe for fun though? And 
Cindy, and remember the first thing we have to do before we start making our recipe? That's right. We have to get out all the cooking tools we need. I'll name the utensils, and you say check when you find each one. Here we go. First, find the measuring cup. Next, find the measuring spoons. Next, find the spatula. The last utensil we need is a mixing bowl. Find one in your kitchen cupboard or ask your mom or dad to help. I hope you got the mixing bowl because now we're going to put all of our ingredients together. And when we put them together in just the right way, what do you think we'll get? You guessed it, bundo. We need flour, salt, vegetable oil, food coloring, and a glass of water. While you get the ingredients, I'll sing a little bit more of our cooking song. Someone's in the kitchen with Cricket. Someone's in the kitchen, I know. Someone's in the kitchen with Cricket. Cooking up some fun fun dough and singing beep by fiddly I -O. make sure we have everything we need. Do you have the flour? How about the salt? Got the vegetable oil? How about the food coloring? Last of all is the water. Good for you. Now we're ready to make fun dough. What step do you think we should start with? <laughs> Can't fool you. We always start with step number one. Step number one says, measure one cup of flour into a mixing bowl. Go ahead. Now we're ready for step number two. Mix in one third cup of salt. You can use your spatula to mix the flour and salt. After step number two comes step number three. Measure one third cup of water. Then add three or four drops of food coloring. I love watching the water turn a pretty color. Now to step number four. Slowly stir the water into the flour and salt. Use your spatula to stir and drip the water in slowly. Step number five says, measure one quarter teaspoon of vegetable oil and add it to the mixture. The quarter teaspoon is the smallest of the measuring spoons. Just dribble the oil all around. Now this is the funnest part of making fun dough. Step number six. With both hands, press and pull the mixture until it becomes doughy. Go ahead and do it while I sing some more. I've been cooking in the kitchen all the live long day. Oh, I've been cooking in the kitchen because my mom says it's okay. Can't you see the folks that come in from all around the neighborhood? They know there's something in the oven because boy, it sure smells good. Have you finished kneading the dough? It should be nice and smooth, not crumbly. If it is a little crumbly, just get your hands wet and knead the dough a little more. Now you're all ready to make some neat things with your fun dough. Like the bead necklace or the Christmas ornaments from our cookbook. Or you can make anything you want. Little plates and cups and saucers. Or the sun and the moon and some stars. When whatever you make dries, you can even paint it with poster paint or draw on it with color markers. If you have any fun dough left over, be sure to wrap it up and store it in the refrigerator. After you do that, clean up the countertop and the kitchen sink. And don't forget to wash and dry the utensils. That way, the kitchen will be nice and clean for the next person who wants to cook. Hey, maybe that'll be you. <laughs> Cause I'll be cooking with you.